morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Hey, I can do this today. I'm a little late, but yesterday was an absolute no-go. Um, I imagine most of the world was like having fits yesterday because Facebook was down and our internet was down for a little while. So, just learn to roll with it, don't you? That's what we do a lot out here. Uh, for those of you that follow us on YouTube, you will find a lot of new videos coming your way. Good morning, Miss Jill. Hello, hello. Good to have you joining me. I hope you're feeling better, sweet friend. But we have lots of videos. Good morning, Terry. Um, we have lots of videos coming your way. We've been kind of steadfast out here with sour snow. We've got, we got four new inches of snow a couple days ago and now the temperatures are really warming up and we just got lots and lots of snow. Good morning Miss Rachel. So we have taken advantage of our time out here and I've been working very heavily on the house as well as videos and if you could just see what is surrounding me I might spin it around a little later. I've got a big 55 gallon drum trash bag right here and I've got all kinds of paperwork to sort through over here. Uh, my shelves are all cleaned off. I packed up all my books and and packing up the office and the house basically. Everything is getting packed up and put into boxes or to storage totes and then put in our shed um, keeping only what we need and either selling or getting rid of the rest. So. It's very refreshing, but it's a lot of work. Those of you that are going through your house room to room know it is a lot of work. And so is all the work that we need to do on the house. Many of you have been following me this year and even last year as I've been showing you the progress photos and videos of the inside of the house. And um, we're, we're certainly putting a dent in things, but I'm going to be honest, yesterday was very, very overwhelming. Just that overwhelming, extreme tiredness set in, that total exhaustion, uh, physical exhaustion, like you wake up and you are just totally and physically spent. And that was where we were yesterday. And then things just proceeded to go poorly the rest of the day in that Things weren't working for him while he was trying to finish the bathroom. Obviously, Facebook and the internet were not working for me, so I was kind of limited on what I could do, but I did certainly have a very productive day. And today's topic will fall into those lines, you know, uh, spending, making the most of your time. But I wanted to talk about this first because I know that I am not the only one that we are not the only ones going through rough experiences right now. We know so, so many of you that are walking um, struggles, different than ours, but the, the emotions and, and the struggles that go along with it and, the, and, and just the tired that comes from it and being worn out. I know many of you are there. And it's about that time of year when lots of chaos just sort of sets into our lives and takes over. Good morning, Chad. And, you know, how many of you have feel that your all your good intentions from the beginning of the year have just been, like, kicked to the wind? That you're struggling trying to keep up, that you're struggling trying to keep your schedule going, that life has just creeped in and took over. How many of you feel that way? I imagine there's many of you because it seems that it's about this time and I don't I don't know what it is if it's you know some for for some out here it could be cabin fever. Um, I mean we've gotten so much snow but it's kind of funny we were out one day this week delivering the armor that I sold. We made it out and took advantage of being out, got some materials so that when we were stuck back here, it was still colder in the beginning of the week. But we got out and this like mile or two from the house, there's like hardly any snow. And back here, it's like waist deep. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. But, you know, we all have different circumstances going on. So give me some heart love here and show me that you are, you're experiencing the same thing or you have so far this year that just life sort of tries to creep in and take over and all our best intentions get kicked to the wind. So I want to ask you, what do you do in that circumstance and, and how do we regroup? And I want to encourage you to, you know, accept your rough days for a rough day, 
but don't stay stuck in them. You know, yesterday we were just in a, we were just so tired. I mean, we both could have just stopped where we were, laid down where we were and slept and probably slept the rest of the day. It was just total exhaustion. And, you know, when you hit those spots, it's okay to, you've got to live through them. You've got to work through them, but you don't certainly want to stay stuck there because what we're doing is allowing the enemy to creep in, um, bringing in negative emotions and, and all that baggage with it. So I have a couple things I'd like to read to you this morning that kind of pertain to what we were experiencing because I know many of you are um, walking different journeys and I just want to give you encouragement. This is from my devotional that I've been reading that we get from the church. Um, the word for today or for you today, the word for you today. Um, finally got our hands on it. Um, thank you, Lynette, for mailing those out to us. Um, but Micah 7, 8, though I have fallen, I will rise. And it is called how to, how to get back up one. We are all despondent from time to time. It can happen on the heels of a great success or victory. Counselors say that for every high, there is a corresponding low. Or it can be caused by disappointment in people. Someone we trusted let us down, and we experience anger and resentment. When you lose a job, we don't just lose our financial security. Sometimes we lose our identity and sense of worth as a person. The cause of our despondency is often physical. When we don't get enough rest, proper food, and exercise, we get run down. Sometimes the cause is chemical. When the brain's chemical messengers that are called neurotransmitters are healthy, we are too. But when... Some of those transmitters, such as serotonin and dopamine, are absent, low, or imbalanced. We struggle and feel depleted. And the cause can be also be spiritual. Jesus said that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why the Bible says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of evil. Often spiritual warfare is either at the root of our problems or is exasperating them. So each morning when you get dressed, be sure to put on your spiritual armor and draw on his mighty power throughout the day. When you're down, that's how you get back up. And truly, guys, that is the answer. I sat in the floor and prayed, Terry said. Yep, and that is the key thing is pulling into God. And this was also very true, is that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We've had circumstances recently um, that were disappointing and that were a uh, struggle and just so, so many different things that have been occurring kind of back to back, all different, um, but that set into motion emotions in us. And um, we've been on this journey for three years now since my illness. And it does get old, it does get heavy, it does get weary, um, and, and we were just physically exhausted. But when you hit physical exhaustion, you are weak, and we allow so many of those negative emotions to come in. And I fought that all day yesterday. Um, I went out, I brought in firewood uh, so that the mountain man wouldn't have to while he was struggling in the bathroom, working um, in there. And... I, I said, it's time to take a break. Let's go sit on the swing and, and start a little fire. And, you know, you got to walk away sometimes. you got to walk away. you got to realize where your struggles are coming from. And you got to be willing to be strong enough to pull yourself to some degree out of that spot. Like I said, you're going to have bad days and you're going to have to surf those bad days. But even through those bad days, realize where your struggles are coming from, what is at the center of those struggles. And what is necessary to get you out of those struggles? Um, you know, the deeper we walk in our faith, you know, the more tools we are given, the more tools we have, um, the easier discernment becomes in realizing where your struggles are coming from. And... Um, being able to turn it around. But we are all human. We are all flesh, so that doesn't make it any easier. I will be the first to say that had I done this yesterday, um, you would have seen a different person. I was just thoroughly exhausted. Now, I feel a little bit better exhausted-wise and tired-wise today. I feel like I got good rest, but I'm still tired. And, you know, sometimes our journeys are really, really hard and 
really have the ability to drain us mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So please pay attention to that. Good morning, Miss Kelly. And, and realize, you know, like I said, what's at the core of, of where we are. You know, the enemy is the Lord of this planet. And, and when we, especially when we are outspoken in our faith, he's going to chip away and work even harder at us. We're fresh meat, you know, he's just going to keep beating the snot out of us. And I really view it that way. I see it that way. I see it in other people in their struggles too. And I just want to encourage you today to be strong. Be strong in your faith. Be strong in your will to fight back. Because the enemy is going to keep trying to break us. And um, I will say this. You guys are all on our on our prayer list. We pray for you all. We pray for the list that's below. So uh, for those of you that are my prayer warriors, the list is always growing. But if you could keep us on that list, we would greatly appreciate it. We just felt yesterday that this place is going to kill us one way or the other. And um, we've been giving it our all. We've been giving it our best fight. But at some point, you know, you have to realize that some things are just not worth dying for. And this happens to be one of them. And I know that God will carry us through. I know that God will help us moving forward. So um, we're going to continue to give it our best fight. But we are um, going to try to get this listed as it is right now. And just keep moving forward so that it doesn't kill us. So prayers would be greatly appreciated. Now this is another one that I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, this was part of a series, but I think that this by itself um, has a lot of power and says a lot. Luke 19.3 He wanted to see who Jesus was. Restoring damaged people. The Bible says that... Is it, I just totally went blank on his name. Zacchaeus, sorry. The Bible says Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree since Jesus was coming that way. The story of Zacchaeus teaches us that rich people can be as damaged as poor people. How some of them get damaged is in the story of how they got rich. When you violate your conscience, it's hard to live in your own skin. When you trade your core values for money, your success can be hollow and your guilt heavy. Zacchaeus struggled with this. Lord, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. If that's how you feel today, Jesus is saying to you the three things he said to Zacchaeus in Luke 19.5. One, make haste. Don't put your salvation off a day longer. At any given moment, you are as close to eternity as a faulty heartbeat or a malignant cell. Don't gamble with your soul. Get right with God while you can. Two, come down. Humble yourself. Kneel at the feet of the one who loves you and gave his life to redeem you. It doesn't matter how badly you failed. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 3. Today I must abide at thy house. The word abide means to take up residence. Refuse to live another day without the assurance that Christ lives in your heart, directs your steps, and watches over all that concerns you. Guys, if, if, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you through those words and through my own um, to definitely consider that. Uh, I couldn't imagine, and I've, t I've said this so many times, I couldn't imagine our life and our circumstances if we didn't know Jesus. He has blessed us so incredibly over these last three years. He has asked us to pick up our cross. He asks us all to pick up our cross daily. But he specifically asked us to pick up our cross and follow him in this um, position we are in where we, we have nothing, ourselves and our home. And that's a lot, but we don't have anything else beyond that. And he asked us to put others first. And, you know, many people of this world who live of this world would say that God would never ask that of us. But I, I plead to differ because we are called to pick up our cross and to follow him. And one of my dear friends, who I'd also like you to pray for, is Starry. Put in, put, 
I shared some stuff with her and she put it in this way that if if Jesus would have asked people of this world, his disciples, prior to going on the cross, his disciples would have said, no, God would never ask you to go through what you're going to go through and hang on that cross for us. That's what they would have said because they were of this world. But we've got to remember that what God asks us to do is bold and amazing and beautiful because the outcome is just tremendous. So, you know, we have the Holy Spirit working in us and running through us and guiding us if we're willing to accept it and feel it. And, you know, when you know that you are being told to do something that the rest of the world is going to think you're nuts, I hope you're at a place in, this, in your life and you've listened to that gut feeling because that gut feeling is the Holy Spirit put a reckoning on us and, and calling us out. And, you know, I hope that you're willing to do the crazy and to do the wild stuff for him. Because I'll tell you what, there is so much amazingness in that. And I just want to remind you today, you know, how important it is to follow him over everybody else. And I mean everybody even those closest to us, when we are called to do something that is really mind-boggling, there is purpose in it. And He uses us. He uses us as tools. And I know that there are many of you that He is using. And I just want to encourage you to keep stepping it up and to keep stepping out in your faith and to listen to the Spirit talking to you because He will call you to do amazing, amazing things. And, and honestly, it is one of the most amazing things we have ever done is to totally pull away from this world and listen to his guidance and do what he's telling us to do. And it has taken us to some pretty amazing places. So with that being said, if you don't have a walk with Jesus and you would like to have one, please personal message me. Email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. I will be happy to help you. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And um, as always, if any of you out there need prayer, our walks are hard. And you don't have to share details if you don't want to. Um, just knowing that you need prayer is enough. And there's many people present right now that will pray for you. So um, if you need prayer, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments. Or again, personal message me or email me. Because um, we all need prayer. And there's a lot of power in prayer. And um, let me just see here. A couple messages came through. Charles Lavelle messaged and said, praying for your renewed strength. Wow, thank you so much, Charles. That means so much because, whew, when you get depleted, it's a tough place. And I know you all know what that's like. We all walk it. We have added the new people to our journal and pray for each. God knows the need. Kelly, thank you so much, sweet friend. I know you can be counted on for prayer. And Cindy, blessings right back at you. And Kelly says, we are his tools to be molded by his will. And Tammy says, howdy, just noticed you are on. Howdy, sister. And exactly, you know, you have to realize that he is going to call us to do things that are uncomfortable. To do things that we would think he wouldn't ask of us. And you know, sometimes in our walks with Jesus, we question are we hearing his voice or are we hearing the enemy's voice? And that's a very common thing. The more you pull in to God, the more you will be able to discern. And, and remember this, God will never ask you to do anything awful, anything negative. What he will be asking you to do is um, stuff that will make you... Uh, nervous, stuff that will make you um, fearful, um, stepping out and doing what we did um, was nerving because it meant we went without for quite a while, but during that time we were nurtured and blessed so spiritually and and we were provided, we were provided for. So um, don't ever question what he's asking you to do. And sometimes, you know, we've done this a couple times in our in our 
marriage now that we've asked other people for guidance. And we are learning now as a married couple, um, not that we shouldn't ask for guidance because the Bible does tell us um, to have good advisors, but ultimately as a couple and as a team, we need to make decisions based on what we feel God is telling us. And sometimes, like I said, asking people of the world, um, you know, you may not get the answers um, that you need. So you've got to be willing to be strong enough to discern truly what God is telling you to do. And if God keeps pushing you, um, don't ignore it. There's so much power in that and so much amazing stuff that goes on in that. So um, that's a little bit of our testimony recently. Um, but... I know you guys hit rock bottom too, and I guess that's where we were yesterday, just in total exhaustion, and um, we do certainly appreciate your prayers uh, for renewed strength, because um, we've got a lot of a lot of different things that we are battling, um, not just, you know, the construction in our home, but keeping jobs going, at the same time decluttering and, and packing and and um, helping others and removing snow. I mean, there's just a lot, just like you guys, there's a lot on our list and there's only so many hours in a day. So that is where this next part and the main part of today's comes into place and into play. And that is making the most of our time and knowing where to spend our time. You guys have great messages today. I can see it already. Liz says, thank you for sharing about Jesus. You are such an encouragement. We'll be praying for you and your family. Blessings to you today. Right back at you, sweet friend. I appreciate your kind words, and thank you so much. And you guys are an encouragement to me. You guys are what keep us going. You guys are, you know, when we get to that point where we think, are we really doing anything? Are we really making a difference? God prompts many of you to reach out in such amazing ways to encourage us that we are helping and it's really powerful. We have an awesome community. We really, really do. Charles says, yes, I need the fellowship and thank you. His, his small inner voice, I need prayer for an endoscopy and my top teeth extracted and my fear. Absolutely, Charles, you got it. And, and you know what those, um, fear, fear comes from the enemy. So remember this, Charles, that he's going to try to stir your pot and stir you up and keep you in that state of fear. Um, it's an amazing place when you can put your full trust in God and know that he is going to take care of you. I have a video coming out. Um, it's, it's taking forever to go live because our internet had problems yesterday. But it should be live today. Um, and it is... Uh, Trying to, oh, Rolling with the Punches is what it's called. You can find that on our YouTube channel. And I made it through that day th with lots of prayer and lots of trust. But it's an amazing thing when you can get to that place where you're not rocked to the core. You're not disheveled when circumstances happen. You're not rattled. Your cage is not rattled. And it's it was a very weird emotion for me to surf. I came to this place through my illness and I really started to get concerned that I was emotionless, that I was brought to a place that through all the chemicals in my body, I'm just emotionless. And that was really hard for me because I wear my heart on my sleeve. You guys see it. And I was just really, really concerned by that. And then all of a sudden one day it dawned on me, and I knew that was the Holy Spirit sharing with me, that it wasn't that I was in a place of numbness and that I had no emotion left. It's that I was in such a strong place of faith that nothing rocked my world. And, you know, even yesterday and even with what we go through, I do not have emotions of fear and worry. And I do not have emotions of where, where you just get rattled, where your heart just gets rattled in, the, in its place. I don't experience that anymore. And it is a tremendous place when you just keep pulling into God and, and know that He is going to take care of things and know that He He has it and, and that your trust is completely there with Him. So know, all of you, that when you hit a place of worry and fear, that is the enemy trying to uh, really keep you in an odd state. Where if we just fully give things to God. And I know that's hard because there were many years in my life where I would give it to God and I would take it right back because 
I needed to contain it or I could do it or whatever the case may be. But um, just keep pulling in. Just keep reading his word. Just keep loving on him and gaining in that relationship and you will hit a place where you will think you're numb. And it's not numbness. It's just total faith and total trust. And I encourage you guys to get there because it's an amazing place. I've noticed recently in some of my circumstances when it when I'm going through things that should be rattling my cage and they're not. And I'm totally trusting and just totally rolling with it. And it's such an amazing thing. So Charles, you can count on our prayers, my friend. I will add you to our list. And Kelly says, you and your family, you know, are such a blessing to ours. Praying for your renewed strength. Thank you, sweet friend. I appreciate that. I know you're only over the mountain. We were checking. You guys are like seven and five hours from us. And that's Tammy uh, as well. And um, when we get out of this spot and we are able to do some fun things and have a little extra fuel money, I think we're going to do a road trip. We're going to do a circle and we're going to hit you guys up. So, Charles says, yes, fear comes from the enemy, the Holy Spirit. He is in us, around us, and through us, and for us. Exactly. Exactly. So, so definitely trust that God is going to take care of you. Um, I totally get your fear in the medical system. Right there with you. So, you, you can count. And, and I've got, we've got great prayer warriors here. Kelly, Tammy, Chad, um, Liz, many of you guys are just such amazing prayer warriors. So you know that in our community, when you request prayer, you're not just getting our prayers, you're getting lots of prayers. And I add this prayer list to YouTube and we've got plenty of prayer warriors out there. It's also in the comments on Facebook. So you will be lifted well, all of you. Kelly says, we know God is walking with us in our upcoming struggles, and he's brought so many encouraging, strong believers into our life through all of this. Praise be to God. Yep, exactly. Joanne says, I needed this. Thank you. You're very welcome. And you know what, Joanne? I don't take the credit for this. God gives me the materials throughout my, my week. Stuff crosses my desk um, through our devotionals. I get on here, and before I get on here, I just pray that God uses me and gives me the right words and um, helps me lead and guide. And it's it amazes me when I end after an hour and a half that I didn't have a law and that what came out of me was just all God. So it's really amazing. So I'm glad that it has helped you. Uh, awesome. Tammy says, we will be praying for you, Charles. Kelly says, we should do a meetup for sure. You're welcome here anytime, sister. Right back at you. Right back at you. I just thought that would be fun. We were talking about that the other night. And Tammy says, that would be wonderful. Would love to meet up. I know. I think it would be so fun. Brian says, make sure on your tour you come by and see me in Port Lucie, Florida. <laughs> it is 80 degrees today and I have lots of room. You also have lots of humidity. Ah! <laughs> But that would be awesome. You know, we've talked about doing that, and it would be a lot of fun. And Brian, thank you, by the way. I was hoping you'd be on here today, because despite not being able to go live, yes, I was living. And although the enemy was trying to fight me yesterday, I beat him to the curb because I got lots done despite not having things working. So when I read your message, it just made me chuckle. Yes, I was living, and I even made it a point to go outside and enjoy the beautiful sun. It is beautiful and sunny today, too. It's gorgeous. The only struggle is it's like heading up into the 50s, so we've got lots of sour snow and like a foot of snow or more on the lane that's just nasty. If any of you know what wet snow is like, thick wet snow, it's not pretty. So we're steadfast, which is okay. But yes, getting outside, living life, Making sure you're living life while you're going through these struggles. You know, sometimes you can't change your circumstances, but you can change most definitely how you handle your circumstances and how you react to your circumstances. So I could have sat and moped all day yesterday. Actually, I could have just given in and slept all day, which wouldn't have been a bad thing either. But we are under the gun. We are feeling the pressure of what we need to accomplish and don't get me wrong, we do take time, we do nap, we, t we take days off. We took Saturday off last week and just chilled because we were exhausted then too. So learning how to roll with your circumstances, learning how to give in 
and, and do things for yourself sometimes. When you can't change your circumstances, like I said, you can change how you react to your circumstances. Sometimes you just might need to sit in front of a fire. Sometimes you might need to take a nap. Sometimes you might need to sit and read an encouraging book. Read the Bible. Read something encouraging. Read a devotional. Journal. Journaling is great. It helps you to totally release the struggles you are dealing with onto paper. It also enables you to write about all the things you're grateful for. So if you are struggling right now and you are not paying attention to what you're grateful for each day, change your mindset. It'll change your life. Trust me. It will definitely do that. And we have so many things to be grateful for. Things might be breaking and falling around us, but my word, the, the things that um, we have to be grateful for are piling up way higher than those things that are breaking. And he's not going to break us. We're pretty powerful. We're pretty, we're, we're, we're pretty uh, stubborn. <laughs> stubborn and, and, and warriors. We've been putting on our, our uh, armor for a long time. Ephesians 6. Read Ephesians 6 today if you need something to read. So, making the most of our time. Mrs., what are you doing? Don't destroy my office. There's only enough room for my Rhodesian Ridgeback. I'm going to spin this around real quick. There is just enough room for her in here. And she comes in and she's like a big puppy. She's a six-year-old puppy. And she's like a bull in a china shop. I don't know if you can see how nice it is outside. There we go. It's sunny and snowy. So it's beautiful. There we go. So, ah, right. Good morning, Miss Holly. Thank you, Kelly. We try to think that. Keep that in mind. It helps us be stronger, right? So, all right. And as you notice, that's another important thing. Surrounding yourself with things that give you pleasure. Um, I know that sounds funny, especially to you guys. You're going to be like, oh, here we go, right? But I have my diffuser going. It's putting uh, on guard into my office, which is very healing. I just love the smell of cinnamon and pines. Um, and that was my uh, chimney in my office. I have a big pillar candle in there that I burn at night. And uh, it's very calming and just very nice and just... Having having good things around you and having a place to escape to is always a good thing. Um, it's either here or outside for me. Um, usually outside. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be heading out in the snowshoes a little later, and I may record that if I can stay upright just because of all the snow and two dogs chasing me. Kelly says, put out your solar panels, charge yourself up too. Yeah, no kidding. Well, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Perfect timing that you shared that going to go outside and put my solar panels out for sure. I am like so solar powered. So that sunshine is just uh, amazing. All right. Ephesians 5.16. Making the most of your time. The life of John Wesley is a great example of scriptural principle. Making the most of your time. He averaged three sermons a day for 54 years, preaching a total of more than 44,000 times in his life. That's really insane. In doing this, he traveled by horseback and carriage more than 200,000 miles, about 5,000 miles a year. Even for a very productive man, that would seem to be a full-time effort. Still, Wesley found time to write and edit. His published works include a four-volume commentary on the entire Bible, a five-volume work on natural uh, philosophy, a four-volume work on church history, and a dictionary of the English language. He also wrote histories of England and Rome, grammars on the Hebrew, Latin, Greek, French, and English languages, three works on medicine, six volumes of church music, and seven volumes of sermons. He edited a library of 50 volumes known as the Christian Library. Each day he rose at 4 a.m., and didn't go to bed until 10 p.m., allowing only brief periods for meals. Yet he declared, I have more hours in private retirement than any man in England. Our days are like identical suitcases, all the same size, but some pack more into them than others. There are purpose-driven, goal-oriented people. Unlike the man whose tombstone read, when it came time to die, I discovered I had not lived. So heed this scripture. Be very careful, then, 
how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. That is so important, guys, and it is very true. We have the same suitcase. We have the same amount of time in our days. And um, John Wesley can have all of that. <laughs> that used to be me. I used to be crazy like that. I've chosen not to fill every waking hour of my day with things because I found that there is more to my life when I am more productive and focus driven in a couple hours in my day I can produce as much work and as much productivity if I change how I view my day so I don't want to live my day that full because the thought of it and my past history of doing that overwhelms me and makes that makes me shudder but I am now accomplishing as much as I did previously by coming into this office and being extremely focused. I also move my office because sometimes as the state of it is right now where I'm sitting, it's overwhelming. So if it's overwhelming me, I'm not going to be productive. So I move to another area of the house. I'll sit on the couch. I'll sit at the table. Sometimes I'll take it outside if it's a clear day like this and it's not too cold that it'll kill my machinery. <laughs> But we have the ability to make the most of our time. How many of you yesterday, just out of curiosity, give me lots of hearts on this because I would bet money on it. How many of you kept checking Facebook yesterday or Messenger to see if it was working after you realized that it was having issues, right? The only thing I went to was Messenger because that's one of my ways of keeping in touch with people from back here. But Facebook, I really try not to be on there more than I have to. That's a waste of my time, and for me, that is not making the most of my time when I am on Facebook or Instagram. You know, they become very huge rabbit holes, and that is how I make the most of my time, by eliminating them from my day or allotting a certain amount of time at a certain point in my day to go there. But I don't go there all the time. I used to tell you how I had problems where I would check my email all the time as if something was so important and granted I do get a lot of important things but I don't need to check it every 10 minutes so now I check it twice a day I have so much more time in my day and I do not feel stressed or panicked to keep checking those things and it's such a wonderful thing good morning Angela Jill says nope in bed for the last 36 hours with a monster headache oh man that is not nice I stopped after my sister told me there were issues. Yep. So that's good. That means you're catching yourself and you're making the most of your time. Now, I go on there a lot for business. I do a lot of research on there. But you've got to be really disciplined. You've got to be really disciplined in your days. And that's what we've been talking about all year. I didn't even know it was out till I saw a post late evening about an outage. Yeah, so... The only reason I knew it was out was because I was trying to go live on it for an hour and I couldn't. And then I, I just gave up. So, um, But then I realized they were having all kinds of problems because I was getting all kinds of errors, which as a web designer I knew were really bad. So I didn't even bother to venture back there. So good. I'm glad to hear that you guys aren't stuck in there. Jill, I'm sorry to hear you have such a bad headache. I had been watching... <laughs> Well, thank you for watching for me. I was trying. I was I was diligently trying. Liz says, no, knew something was not right, but had two of my grandchildren here. They are more important than Facebook. Exactly. And that's what it comes down to, guys, is the way to make the most of our time is to do what I asked you to do earlier in the year and make a list of what is most important to you. Kelly says, lol, I thought I was in Facebook jail due to some posts I'd shared. <laughs> nope, we were all in Facebook jail. No, it was having some major issues yesterday. And to me, when that stuff happens, like when the internet goes down, I'm like, I start celebrating because then I truly am freed of my some of my responsibilities and, and, and then I can live a little more wildly because I can't do any of those things so I can redirect myself to things that... Um, 
maybe more important, or, or just to keep moving forward and, and working on something. That's why my, that's what my sister thought. Oh, <laughs> funny. Yeah, no, that was, honestly, I don't remember Facebook having any real big problems like that before, but that was, that was a doozy. They were having all kinds of issues yesterday. So, you know, sometimes like that, like I said, in that circumstance, I celebrated. I didn't get upset. I didn't get worried. I knew as much as I try to be faithful every Wednesday, it's good for me as much as it is for you guys. I really enjoy my opportunity and my time with you guys and to be able to chat with you guys. It means a lot to me because I know that we are helping build each other up and through what we are doing together here, we are hopefully reaching other people too and that's my goal. Speaking of which, um, this is really cool. Uh, a follower from the UK reached out. I haven't sent a newsletter out in a while, which has prompted me to write one. Um, there's so many things, newsletters, podcasts, blog posts, Facebook lives, Instagram shares, Facebook posts. There's a lot of responsibilities and I'm one person. So I've picked what I felt was most important, but he was concerned. He hadn't heard from us in two months. And, um, when he got on our Facebook page, he saw the house was for sale, so he didn't realize that we were selling. And so he was really concerned that something was wrong. And it inspired me to do a couple things. From now on, on our website at treyerwilderness.com, when you go on there, there are sections that describe the different things that we do, the different things we have available to you. One of the things that is currently there is our blog post. In the blog post, you see the... Um, podcast as well as the blog post being shared because those are part of my blog feed. Um, but what I'm going to do today when I'm done here is I'm going to break it up. There's also a section that says you can visit our YouTube channel and you click on that and you can go to YouTube. I'm going to feed our YouTube videos there. So when you go to our website, it's a one-stop shop. You can go to our store. You can go to right there and see our video, our recent videos and keep clicking through to see all the videos we have or you can go to our YouTube channel. You can see all the podcasts, listen to the podcast there or subscribe to me on iTunes. You can also read our blog posts and go back into things and view our history there. So from our main page of our website moving forward, you will be able to see everything that's going on. So you will know that if you didn't see a podcast, check the videos. That might be where we're focusing our attention because it's easier at the time if you don't see a blog post, you know, vice versa. Because we are having to really fly by the seat of our pants here and do what is easiest and best for us to be able to communicate with you guys and keep things going. Um, I was doing good with the podcast until we got the snow. And I didn't want to record podcasts while heavy breathing and shoveling. I just didn't think that would sound good. So I... I steered away from that for a while, but I'm going to try to get some podcasts out there, um, record those today while I'm out and maybe while I'm out snowshoeing, take a break and record one. But you can find everything we are doing on our main page. The other thing you can do if you are interested in supporting us for $3 a month, which is 11, I think it works out to 11 cents a day. You can join us on Patreon. Patreon is going to have everything posted that we are doing current. So it will have, if I posted an Instagram photo, it's going to be there. So everything will be a one-stop shop there. And through your contribution there, you will be helping us to keep doing what we do and to stay stay live and, and communicating with you. And you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Patreon. The other nice thing about Patreon is that it is a private community. And what we are hoping to build there is a community like this where we are able to communicate very privately and personally with our community versus trolls that come in off the YouTube videos and everything else. They're not going to pay to support us to come in and, and give us grief. So it'll be a nice, quiet, private community where we can pray for each other, talk to each other, communicate, help each other, and encourage and inspire each other. So I was kind of staying away from Patreon because I had heard a lot of mixed feelings on Patreon, but I've decided that that's where I want to go because I really, we are building such an amazing community and I need us to have a hub where we can be there for one another. So if that sounds like something that interests you, please join us over on Patreon. Some of you already have, and we thank you so much for that. And like I said, that 
helps us to keep things going. It costs us a lot of money to keep our website going and to keep our gear and equipment up to date and functioning and replacing those that are damaged. It's hard to find a good tripod these days. I tell you what, with us going in the woods all the time, we are annihilating tripods. They just don't make them like they used to. So I don't know how loud that is. I'm going to be competing a little bit here with the mountain man. He is working in our bathroom and finishing that today, which is really exciting. One more room finished. Woohoo! And I will do a video of our progress. We also got materials to do the ceiling in our uh, great room. So that will be a huge burden off of our list to have that finished. So we'll keep sharing that with you in our progress and updates. But what are some ways for you guys, in your opinion, in your life, in what you do in, in your day to day, to make the most of your time? Have you found ways that enable you to make the most of your time? I'm going to share some of mine. There's links below for the apps that I use. I'm also going to create a printable for you guys to utilize for your habits and your daily to-dos. Um, this came to me in a dream, which I thank God for, because he always implants such great stuff in my dreams. Um, he still does it, but when I programmed, I'd go to bed having a problem with a program that I couldn't get to work, and I'd wake up after dreaming about it and know how to sit down at the computer and just fix it because I fixed it in my dream. So pretty cool stuff. Um, love how he does that. But I have these forms that I um, are in my head. I need to get out into onto the computer and I'm going to create PDF files for you, printables that you can keep using because I know many of you um, utilize pen and paper and that is great. I can't do that anymore. Um, it's just inefficient for me at this point in the game. So I use my machines and I use certain apps, but creating a routine, oh, I just saw Angela say that, routine, get up, get ready, load of wash, read Bible, etc. Awesome. A routine is so important. You know, the mountain man and I have always been wild childs in that, you know, we fly by the seat of our pants, we do the crazy stuff, and, and we, f we, we um, go against society. We are complete opposite of what society asks of us. Um, but we also fought a routine because we felt that went against what we were living for. However, a routine is important. A routine creates stability. A routine creates consistency. A routine gives you direction. And not that we can't be wild childs without a, uh, with a routine. We can. As a matter of fact, we can be more so because we have more time on our hands to enable us to do that because we are on a routine and a schedule that enables us to quickly get things done and not spin our wheels or go in circles or feel lost and, and, and without direction. That's not a good place to be, and I really believe that the world creates that in a lot of ways. Um, even though they expect a routine... When you're not really focused down and you're not making the most of your time, you're still spinning your wheels and going in circles. So, yes, most definitely, Angela, a routine is huge. And creating that routine and having things in your day-to-day -day, um, that bring you joy, um, that also slow you down at night. I like to write in my journal and I like to do the melt method. I do the hand treatment at night. I do the hand treatment in the morning. And if I'm feeling off or my spine feels out of alignment, because one of the problems I have is when I sit, especially in our stools at our, our dinner table, they're so solid and hard, it creates compression in my spine. So that melt method is really good for that. So I will use the roller for that. But there are things that I do intentionally in my morning. Um, Spending time with God with my cup of coffee right off the bat is very inspiring, gives me direction for my day, and um, can really center us. You know, so having that in my routine is important for me. Um, doing the melt in the evening relaxes me greatly. It puts my body into a healing state, so I will sleep better, I will heal better through the night, and hopefully wake up better. And writing in my journal is just part of my new routine. And when I do that, it gives me great joy. Sometimes I will draw on my journal pages. So um, keeping that consistent makes me so happy. Um, 
and having created that new habit, as I'm packing up my office, I have found umpteen journals from each year that start out in January and go to mid-January, maybe February if I'm lucky. Then I might jump back in in May or June or July and then it's toast and then there's nothing else. And that saddens me because I would have really liked to look back on my, my years. There's much that I remember, but there's, I'm sure, much that I don't remember. And it's just nice to be able to look back over time. And it wasn't something that I could commit and make a habit out of because I was too busy chasing my schedule and not focused and not making the most of my time. Where now, it is a habit. It has been a formed habit and I get very upset or frustrated when I can't get to it because something gets uh, in the way. So I'm, I make it an extreme point to make time for that. Kelly says, Mike and I balance one another out. He's more spontaneous where I like routine and I can be spontaneous, but need firmer direction. That's good. And you know what? That's where we become help meets for one another. And that is important. Um, the problem for the mountain man and I, um, I guess maybe he's a bit more spontaneous than I am, but we are both, we both tend to lead in that direction, but um, we're both very goal oriented and we're both very organized, which helps us. So, um, but yes, holding each other up and centering each other and helping each other out is really, really important and a really huge growth tool. Um, regardless how different you are or how alike you are, um, it's really important. You know, we've been really blessed that through our ups and downs. Um, there haven't been too many days where we are down together, so that really helps us in lifting the other up in those down days. Yesterday we were both exhausted together, and it didn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good just because we were just that physically tired. Um, but today's a new day, a new beginning, and that's what we got to remember. You're going to have those days, so if you can focus on the new beginning, regroup, revamp, redirect, get your routine back, um, get your focus back. You know, sometimes we can end up in those places because we don't dig into God throughout our day. That's one thing that we hold steadfast, but there were times previously where we didn't. And it was, a, you know, you could see the direct result of that. So there's much to be said in that. And that's, um, I just want to encourage you guys with that. But um, the routines are good and having balance, finding the right tools you know, something we were talking about all year is finding the right tools. Sometimes, you know, I'm going to suggest things to you and you're going to try them and they're not going to work for you. There are many people that I follow that make suggestions on things that they utilize and I try them. I will give them, a, I will always give them a try because I value their opinion. I value what they are teaching and I value their place. You know, they've worked hard to get where they are and when they share what, how they've gotten there, that's useful information. But that doesn't mean it's going to work for me. Same as with what I share with you. So the thing is, you've got to be willing to try things, be willing to step out and see what works and what doesn't work for you, and not be afraid to change it up when it's not working. Um, so that is that is how I got where I am, is by utilizing different tools, figuring out what works and what doesn't work, trial and error. Um, you know, learning what works best in my office. I do not like clutter. I do not work well with clutter. It drives me insane because that's what I want to work on first is to get rid of that clutter. So if you're the same way, take a day and eliminate the clutter because you will function and operate so much better once that is gone. Um, so that's why in my routine right now, even though I can't just sit here and chip away at all this stuff because it, it's going to take a, a full day. Maybe I can devote a Saturday to it, but we've been working on the house. Sundays I don't work. This is work, so I don't touch it. But chip away. Progressively chip at things if you have to, to get them done. Um, like I said also, if, if there's something in a room that's um, weighting you down and not enabling you to be productive, move if you can. Um, but have a plan. Have a plan. Have a calendar. Um, the video that I'm sharing about rolling with the punches, you will see. Um, it's important to have a plan and to have backup plans and and to um, have prayer warriors too. You know that's important as well. When you are in a bad streak and you are in a valley, don't hesitate to ask for prayer. P the power of prayer is huge, and and also turning to God. You know. 
I sit down with Papa a lot during the day, or I'll be at my comp Really, I realize that I do it a lot throughout my day. When I'm uh, in questioning something, when I'm in need of uplifting, when I um, am questioning my direction, what I should be working on when, when something isn't working, you know, I, I find myself talking to Papa all the time, and that's a good thing. Um, and, you know, when our focus is there, everything else kind of comes together. Uh, it may not you know, you might have a rough day, but when you really retrain your focus, give things to him and ask him for direction, he'll guide you through your day to make things uh, the most use of your time and to be the most productive that you can be. And this is the time of year where things are going to get thrown off. Many of you are experiencing spring. It's going to be a while till we have spring out here, but um, that's okay. But as the seasons change, that can hijack our schedules because new things come into play. New, um, we want to dive into the garden. We want to dive into this, that, and the other thing. So we got to make sure that the things that are most important to us still stay on our calendars, still stay in our sights, and that they don't get lost. Um, one of my favorite things to do when I was in my garden was to pray and to talk to God. I mean, what better place as he's nurturing my soil and my seeds. And, you know, it's just such a neat feeling to watch your seedlings grow and to see things maturing and, and you know, to see the fruit of your labor. So um, the other thing I do is listen to podcasts while I'm out there, inspiring podcasts. Um, I did a lot of worship music while I was out there. You know, so there's so many ways we can incorporate multiple things into our schedule and utilize our time wisely so that we are gaining from our experiences and we are not losing the things that we hold near and dear. So what are some other ways that you guys um, multitask? There's a lot of... Now, multitasking is not... Um, that is something I used to be a queen at. I thought I was so great at multitasking and that that was such a great tool. However, I found through my progression to making the most of my time is that I was spending a lot of time spinning my wheels multitasking because I wasn't finishing the thing I started. So when I say multitask, let me rephrase that to and explain what I mean. When I'm doing dishes, there is not a whole lot of thought involved in that, right? And um, when I'm folding wash, you know, those are times of my day that if I multitask, it's not going to affect how I fold that towel. And if it does, it's not going to be the end of the world. So when I'm folding wash, when I'm hanging wash, when I'm doing dishes, when I'm making supper, I am listening to something. I am listening to a podcast. I am listening um, sometimes to a Bible chapter being read. I am listening to worship music. I am listening to educational things and encouraging things. And I am finding ways to multitask during those senseless uh, mundane things that we do in our day so that I am um, building on my knowledge bank. I am putting my emotional and spiritual state in a great place and I'm getting things done. So when I say multitasking, that's the part of my day where I will multitask. But when I'm working, I am working on a to-do list and I am going from one thing to the next. This one has to be finished before I get to this one. If this one isn't finished, the to-do gets changed because I either ran into something that needs to be done and I can't do it right then, and then that gets moved to the next day. But or to later, or whatever the case may be, but I go through a to-do list and I'm marking it off. I am not jumping around, I am not multitasking, I am not being hijacked into a rabbit hole on Facebook or Instagram because I do that at a certain point in my day, and then I set a timer and I limit myself there. Otherwise, it's real easy to get sucked in. Emails I check the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. If there are emails that I am expecting, I can turn those notifications on so that when that comes through, I know, but I don't have to keep paying attention to it. 
So setting these things into motion and making the most of our time is really, really important because at the end of the day, you will be satisfied with what you've accomplished versus being depressed and upset because you don't feel like you accomplished anything. And that's how most of us feel, I would bet, right? If you are not on a routine, you don't have a plan, you don't have a schedule, that's how you feel. And on a, in a situation like that, even if you're dealing with health issues, it is important to have a plan and a schedule and to have a focus. If you are bedridden, it's important to have a focus because it's very easy for depression and um, uselessness to set in. And you don't need to be there. If you are bedridden um, d through illness, there are many things you can do to, to help the world and to help people in your circumstance. So don't feel like there aren't things that you can be doing. Reading good books and educating ourselves. Reading, you know, researching information on the internet. I have such a huge to-do list. I have to-do lists for different things. House, the, the work we're doing on the house. I have a to-do list for things I want to research so that they don't all end up on my main to-do list. I don't want them there because I can't do them all in one day. But I have a massive list of things that I want to go through so that when I think of them, I write them down so I don't forget them. And then I, when I create my to-do list on Sunday for the week, I can incorporate a couple of those into some free spots or into areas where I do my research. Angela says, I am easily distracted. I tend to get hijacked by whatever is in front of me, even if I have a plan. I used to be that way too. Um, best analogy I can give is you're packing in one room, you're staying focused in that room, and all of a sudden you find something that belongs in another room. So, of course, you've got to take that to the other room. You get to the other room, you find something that belongs in yet another room, so you go to that room. You end up out in the kitchen, you start doing dishes. Right? It's just the weirdness of it all. But when you learn to pay attention, um, Angela, to when that sets in, and suddenly when you were hijacked and you just stop and you realize you were hijacked and you go back to what you were doing and you keep doing that and you keep redirecting. It's kind of like when you pray to God. I know many of you have this struggle too. You start praying and all of a sudden a thought pops in your head and you start thinking about something and you're not even in your prayer anymore. Or, or you know, you were doing a devotional and something like that happens. You, your thoughts, you're listening to a sermon and you're listening and all of a sudden your thoughts end up out here. And, you know, um, gosh, what book was that in? It might have been in Jesus Calling in the one days. That's going to bug me now. I'm going to have to think about that. But um, it's where Jesus is saying, you know, look, I know your thoughts just went left into left field. And that's okay. Redirect them. Bring them back. And, and you know, spend time with me. Uh, I think it was Jesus calling. The other thing that's really funny is uh, Headspace does that. Um, I'm trying to think of what the guy's um, name is um, with Headspace. Um, he's got a foreign accent. But Headspace is a meditation app, and it's really good. It's very helpful in helping you learn to meditate. So maybe that's another option, Angela, is learning to get into that meditation. Um, it's a, I, I believe with Headspace you can still get in there free and try it, and the basics are plenty to get you on track to learning to meditate and meditate isn't a um as the mountain man would say you know meditation can be done you know with with god meditation is just uh clearing your your mind and when when i do that i keep god in it so that is how i meditate and when you learn to meditate and pull yourself back in um it really helps you I believe and I believe that was a good stepping stone for me to realizing when I'm getting hijacked so um, give that a try too but really focus on where you're going off track when you're going off track and you catch yourself blatantly you know scold yourself for it and get yourself back on track make it evident make it a reality that you are noticing that you are are doing that so that you can make it a conscious effort to make a new habit of stopping it you have to that's the only way you're going to make those changes and and it it is a process it doesn't happen overnight habits take 30 days plus to be able to 21 to 30 days plus to be able to create a new habit so let's see here a bunch of you have said things 
Kelly says, I found with age comes wisdom. We learn from our errors and work to Im implement better ways to do things. As you said, spinning your wheels only exhausts you, which I did for years. Now we, I think you say prioritize. Let me see if it's going to let me. Ah. It's not letting me in there to see more. Nope. All right. But you prioritize now and you have a better plan, an angle of attack. And that's what's important. And yes, we get wiser as we get older and we learn what works and what doesn't work. If we are intuitive and we are paying attention and we are making a note of it, the only way you, in the video that I did, um, I mentioned, you know, when, when things go awry and, you know, in a, in a preparedness situation, in a survival situation, in a day-to-day -day situation on the homestead where something breaks and you've got to totally improvise over and overcome, you know, you've got to also take the time to analyze, is there something I could be doing different? Is there something I could have done different that would have eliminated that from happening? Is there something that I could have done that would have, that I could have prepared differently that if that does happen again in the future, I'm prepared? fuel filter, uh, breaker, uh, more water, you know, all those things come to mind. The same applies with what we're doing day to day. Is there something I could be doing differently that would make my day better, that would enable me to use my time wisely? These are the things we got to pay attention to. If we consistently year after year keep spinning our wheels, keep exhausting ourselves, keep trying, keep thinking we are the best uh, multitaskers in the world and that we're, we're working like queens, but we're not accomplishing anything, what good is that? We've got to pay attention. We've got to be intuitive. We've got to be knowledgeable. We've got to be willing to change. That is the key thing. We have to be willing to change. We need to be willing to put things into place that are different. You know, I know so many people that hate change, that, that you know, have such a crazy routine that it is such a routine that it, it has to be this way or they are a total disaster. That's not good. That is totally not good. So keep that in mind too, that when you're creating your routine, that you create a routine that you are going to follow, but that you are willing to roll with when it goes awry. Because you all know that something is gonna, something is gonna need our attention, sometimes daily. Tammy knows Tammy's had a, a flock full of sick children. That's hard. And like she said too, she was sick. So it, us, you know, us mothers don't get much chance for rest when everyone else is sick. So right there is a major hijack. It's one she couldn't control. It is one that she couldn't change the circumstances of or have done anything differently. However, she realizes her schedule has been hijacked and then she starts getting back into it again. These are things that we've got to be willing to do. Do not get yourself on such a routine that when it goes, when it goes south, you can't live life. That's not good. So you, there's, there's a fine line for each of these things and a fine line in learning these things. And when, honestly, guys, you know how I said before that I was numb of emotion and that it wasn't that I was numb of emotion. It was that I was that faithful and, and trustworthy of God. Well, in the same circumstance, I am numb to reactive emotions when it comes with hiccups in our schedule and things breaking. I don't react. I don't. I am numb. And I honestly, um, the video that's coming out, Rolling with the Punches, was from my uh, Sunday's adventures. And uh, it really made me chuckle while videotaping that to realize how numb I am to the unexpected and the unknown and, and stuff just happening. And that's honestly a good place to be because when you are numb to that, you are more willing to roll with it and figure out how to overcome it than you are to react to negative emotions and be upset over it and worried about it. And, you know, cause when things break here, we don't have any money to fix it. You know, uh, we don't have any money to progress anything financially. So it's gotta be with our abilities and, um, I don't know. When you get to these places, it's just an amazing place to be. And I want to encourage you guys to be there because so many of you end up with kinks in your days, your schedules go south, and it's the end all. If that was that way for me, oh my goodness, we would be so sunk. And and the same with him. You know, we we 
we are in a position we have to keep going regardless how we feel and what's going on we have to keep moving and even even though yesterday was a really tired day we still got stuff done. He still progressed in the bathroom. It did fight him, but he got stuff done. I had a really productive day here because I just rolled with it. I just went on to the, something else. And it didn't make the day any easier, but looking back on the day today, you know, looking back today to yesterday, I'm excited with what I got done. Um, my office looks a heck of a lot better, and I'm happy with what I accomplished. So sometimes maybe during the heat of it all, you can't see the progress. You can't see the... Things to be grateful for, but certainly look for them. All right, what do we got here? Kelly says, oh, Kelly says it was in the Jesus Calling. That is, that was just funny to me when I read that because it's so true and it's so often that it happens when, um, what she's talking about there was when I said about um, in the Jesus Calling where he asks you to, Jesus asks you to pray with him and then, you know, he, he calls you out of being on a bunny trail. Um, it just, it happens to all of us and, and he realizes that and we need to realize that. And it was just funny. Jesus calling is a neat devotional in that it talks, it is written as if Jesus is talking to you every day. And it's really, really cool. I really like it. I've used it for years and years. Rachel, Miss Rachel uh, gifted me with that and I have gifted it and passed it on and referred people to it for forever. It's just awesome. Kelly says another thing that works to keep me on the positive is to do something fun each day. For sure. For sure. We have to feed ourselves. We have to feed our souls. We have to feed our happy selves. Um, Tammy says, I could have taken better care of myself to try to not get sick. Yes, but at the same time, when you've got that many sick children, sometimes it can be really hard. My hat is off to you, warrior woman. You were in my prayers for sure, and I'm glad you're feeling better. But it's hard. It's hard when you have all those germs floating around. I mean, we cringe going to town because we know our immune systems are really, our, our immune systems are good and strong, but we are not around any germs out here. It's so wholesome and fresh. And you go into town and you get boxed up in the grocery store or in church or wherever, and you have all those germs. Thankfully, our immune systems are pretty good, but occasionally that does happen. So, you know, you can't, but you did good, girl. And yeah, doing something fun. That's why I said I said to you guys earlier in the year that we've got to find the things that give us joy and make sure they are part of our day to day. Because um, without those things, you're just constantly, I feel, on on that gerbil wheel or on that you know that that hamster wheel. And you know you're doing things to get things done, but you're not feeding yourself. And that's where. For me, reading the Bible in the morning, doing my devotionals, doing my journal in the morning feeds my soul and fulfills me for my day. It prepares me for my day. It actually directs my day most of the time. And then um, I work on my basket that I'm working on. I'll, I'll draw, I'll pencil draw or black ink. Um, I want to get into painting, um, but with the house torn up in the way that it is right now, I don't maybe down the line, but that is on my list. And I have a list for that stuff too. You know, stuff that gives me joy, stuff that, uh, creative things that I want to do. I love doing leather work. Um, I love being outside. When I am outside, I am so renewed all the time. So, you know, find what gives you joy and make sure that you have those things in your week and in your days. Um, I like to finish my journal off at the end of the day so that I, you know, completed my day and, um, it's all written and maybe sit there and draw. You know, but you have to, you have to be good to yourself. A lot of times, if we're not good to ourselves, nobody else is going to be. And something else I want to really encourage you guys to do. The Mountain Man did a video on this that'll be coming out. You know, we see so many hurting people around us. You've heard me talk about this, about serving others, and and also serving others when we are in our worst spot because. You know, that's going to fill a place and, and, and add joy to our lives, too, knowing that we are caring for other people. And that should be something that we as Christians are doing. And the Mountain Man did a video on it because we are seeing so many hurting people and them not being cared for. I have a friend who has been debilitated for four months. Her church knew that she was debilitated. She lost her job during that period. She has been 
bedridden and unable to care for herself in most ways. She can't drive herself. If she does, it creates great pain, and sometimes she ends up stuck where she went to and can't get back. And you know, the church knew this, and there is not one soul that reached out to her to see if they could help her, to see if there was something they could do, to send her a card to empower her and just let her know she's being thought of. That's a real powerful thing. Instead, she left the church, and then one woman came and wanted to know why she left the church. That's why she came to visit her, not to take care of her, not to love on her. And you know what? That's sad. And we as Christians and the church are meant to be the people that are caring for our own and caring for those around us. So I want to encourage you when you're in church on Sunday or if you go to church on Saturday or if you go to church on Wednesday evenings, whenever you're there, if you don't know the person next to you in your pew, make it a point to get to know them. If you know there are hurting people in your church, in your community, don't sit back. Be proactive. Add that to your to-do list as something that gives you joy. Because we need to strengthen those ties and we need to be what we are called to be. Because there have been so many circumstances that we have witnessed recently locally that have just been heartbreaking. And to know that our church is not caring for its own. And our church is not caring for those within its walls that are really hurting and struggling. You know, many people go to church just because they are called to go to church on Sundays. But when they leave the doors on Sunday, they are not walking out what they are being taught. And sometimes even the churches are teaching the wrong things today. So I want to call you out beyond the church as a Christian to add that to your to-do list weekly that you are feeding the flock and that you are feeding and helping your brother or sister near you, next to you, from afar, whatever the case may be. Because we need to do that. And I want to request silent prayer for a couple people. Um, Kelly could use some unspoken prayers. Chad could use some unspoken prayers. Mona and Ken could use some unspoken prayers. And uh, the prayer list below, if any of you need prayers, please don't hesitate. Charles asked for prayer, so guys, please lift him up in prayer. We will be lifting you, Charles, and I will be checking in on you to see how you are making out and how you're doing. And uh, I just want to encourage that, guys. You know, that is what we are called to do above anything else, above keeping organized, above having a schedule, above um, making the best of our time. Um, we are called to serve. And um, teaching our children to do the same, opening the door for an elderly person, bringing the cart back from the grocery store when they've unloaded the groceries. You know, you see somebody with a cane that's bringing their cart back, stop them. Tell them to enjoy their day and take the cart the rest of the way for them. You know, this is the stuff we were taught to do as children, many of us, and it is becoming a lost art. So I want to leave you with that, to add that to your list of ways to fulfill yourself by, by serving others. Um, and when you serve others, you shouldn't be looking for something in return. That is what we are called to do. Um, so I just... It's been something that's really been heavy on our hearts because of some of the things we've experienced as well as what we are seeing. And, and it's, it's really disheartening and saddening. And, you know, we've got to be willing to make an effort. Every baby step we take um, may be the light somebody else needs that's watching if it's the woman in the parking lot, you know, someone might be sitting in their car and see that and realize that they're falling short. We need to remind people. We need to show people. And that's just it. We need to show people because the, the current generations, a lot of the current generation is not being shown how to live life that way. And we need to be the role models and the encouragers. And, and you know, those, those things have a ripple effect. So don't be afraid to do that. Uh, let's see here. Kelly says, being the caregiver is a hard job. Don't regret getting ill. It was time for you to rest too. Yeah, you know, that's true. And, and honestly, this is so huge because God shared this with me. 
You know, when you end up in a place where you are stripped and God has taken some of your abilities away, and you're bed bound, you're, you're in a wheelchair, please, please, please don't feel like God can't use you where you are. God shared with me when I was flat on my back that God intended to use me right where I was. He has us oftentimes right where he needs us. We just need to be willing to see that and do the work from where we are. You are beautifully and wonderfully made and God has purpose for each of us. So regardless where we are in life, what physical state we are in, even what mental, emotional, or spiritual state we are in, God can use us. And um, one of the best ways God can use us is when we share our testimony of how we got where we are. It's a powerful, powerful tool. But so many of us are afraid to speak up and share. And I get that. Um, we all have different personalities. But um, make it be something that you focus on becoming more courageous about. Because we all have the ability to change lives, save lives, and uh, to make a positive difference. So keep, remember that. And awesome words, Kelly. Thank you for sharing that. Kelly says, this is why Mike and I are volunteer EMTs on our ambulance service. If people didn't sacrifice time, there would be no ambulance service for our rural area. We also have great contacts through that. Now, again, it doesn't show me everything, so Kelly, I'm sorry. But yeah, you know, volunteering our time in soup kitchens, in the food banks, at the church, donating things to the church. Like our church has a clothing area and a food area and we've donated many a times, you know, we've been given food or we had food that we couldn't eat, you know, and rather just throw it away. There are other people that can eat it, you know, because of our food sensitivities or whatever. Clothing, I mean, that's one thing that we have abundance of because I shop at thrift stores and I get things for 25 and 50 cents. We go through clothes very heavily here. We go through different seasons that require, you know, um, cold weather gear and so when we started sorting through our clothes, that was something that we could very easily donate to others. And that family that lost their home last week, that's what we're putting together, is we're sorting through the Mountain Boy's clothes because he can donate some clothing to the boys. Angela says an elderly couple in our church got notice that they had to move after 18 years. My kids and I went over to help. They insisted on paying us. I haven't cashed the check because we wanted to gift. I imagine you're saying you wanted to gift them. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. And and you know what? Think about that. You know, for for us younger ladies that are packing our homes right now, imagine what that would be like. It's cumbersome for us. And then to try to pack, um, you know, 18 years of things. You know, I've got nine years of things and it's overwhelming. And we try not to, you know, to overdo things and to only keep what we need. But it's just amazing. You know, you're gifted things, you're, you, you inherit things, whatever the case may be. So that right there is a huge gift because can you imagine how that would have taxed them? They were already stressed. It was already a very stressful situation for them. And then to have to try to pack all that stuff that was that was awesome, Angela. And that's the kind of stuff we can do because for us, for one, in that situation, we have no connection to their stuff. There is no connection there, so it's not overwhelming. Um, other people's work, if you have ever noticed, other people's work is so much more enjoyable. My mother-in-law will say that all the time when she comes out. You know, this is enjoyable to her. It's not work. Where at home it would be work. You know, she's helping me when she comes out. So, you know... And, and who knows, when you're doing that kind of stuff, what a great way to share your story, your testimony, um, and what a, just, what a great way to renew somebody's strength and to just let them know that people love them and that they are loved. And, and sometimes, you know, the, these situations happen where it's, they're helped by total strangers. You know, that's what we need in our communities to rebuild the strength of our communities because you renew somebody's strength that strangers come in when your house is burned down to the ground and you've got people coming in that you didn't know and from nowhere, from out of the woodwork. 
just helping you. Can you imagine how that renews their strength in the community and one sense, you know, helps them to want to stay? And then imagine what kind of ripple effect that will have for them moving forward when something happens to a neighbor or something, someone else, and they jump in to somebody unknown and offer their help. You know, the ripple effects of our goodwill and our abilities to serve people can be life altering and changing so that is so awesome and that is truly what we are called to do and you know what what irritates my mountain man more than anything is to see that non-christians are doing that before christians because christians that's what we're called to do and and sometimes we just get so involved in the world and the way the world operates that we forget that it's important to put ourselves out and lift a finger and I think that's what we're trying to call people out to do is to realize that, to not to get so comfortable in our own lives that we forget to care for others. So remember that. And Angel, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Jill says, I make scarves and blankets for others. That's so awesome. And see, there's a perfect example. Jill shared earlier that she has been debilitated with a massive migraine. And I, and, and, um, I know Jill has been sick. So for Jill to do those kind of things, God is using her where she's at and using her talents because I know how precious a homemade gift is to me. I love homemade gifts. I love the stories behind homemade gifts. And I love the just to, you know, I've got many downstairs, you know, scarves and, and, and hats. And when I'm wearing them, I, I, can't help but think of the person who made it for me. It's just a great thing. It's a great, great thing. And it's just so renewing. It really is. It's renewing. Um, you know, especially for us, we live in the middle of nowhere. So I don't see the, one of my friends, um, who's gifted me with a lot of things. She's 2,500 miles away. So to be able to feel her love when I put something on that she gifted me with, you know, years ago is just a wonderful feeling, you know, and there again, the ripple effect. And Angela says, I tried to do it quietly, but she kept ranting about us to everyone. It was kind of embarrassing because we didn't do that much. But Angela, look at something. Look at how much that meant to them. And yes, it is a very humbling and awkward feeling when people call you out like that. And um, I'm sure knowing you, that you reacted humbly and it was hard to, you know, I'm sure it embarrassed you some, like you said, but imagine maybe what her words may have done to some of the others that she was mentioning it to because maybe they were fully capable too, but they didn't make the choice to. So there's a ripple effect in that also. And, um, you know, that just shows how grateful they were and how much of an impact you made. So it's, it's called being humbly embarrassed and, and that's part of it, but that's really awesome. That's really, really awesome. And I'm sure that by them saying something, it may have uh, evoked some um, emotions in other people that maybe didn't offer to participate or even know that they were struggling, you know? So it's okay. And it was awesome that you did it. Jill said, not migraine, whole lymph system inflamed to the point of not being able to move. I just call it a monster headache as my face is too swollen to even put my dentures in. Girl, I totally get that. Wow. I'm going to message you later with some um, things you can do. Wow. You know, you know that that's what I dealt with for three years. That's really hard and I totally get that because it gets to the point where every part of your body hurts and my skin used to hurt just to the touch. So, so like laying down, the sheets were too much for my skin. So I get that girl. Oh gosh. You, I, now I know specifically how to pray for you, but I also have some things I can share with you on how to help you. Tammy said, maybe it will inspire someone else to do the same for others. Yeah. You know, and, and the other thing is too, guys, we are called to anonymously care for people and to serve people. So I, I know many people that were struggling and, and this is pretty awesome. My friend that I talked to you about, um, that's been struggling for four months. I mentioned she lost her job and, 
Um, she's a very faith-led person, too, and she has a great faith and trust in God. And there were ways for her to get money through the system, but it required her to be um, dishonest. And she, she knew that wasn't the direction she wanted to go. And she was willing to accept whatever God had in store for her versus taking that as an avenue. And um, she went to her P.O. box after choosing not to go that direction and ended up with enough, the same, the same exact amount of money she would have gotten had she been dishonest through gifts from people. And I know others who were struggling greatly and they would have, you know, people at the church who would walk up to them and give them a hug and stick something in their hand and, and just let them know they were praying for them or tell them not to open it till later, things like that. And they get home and it was just what they needed to cover bills that were due the next day or they'd go to their mailbox and there would be an envelope with no postage no nothing that somebody dropped during the night and left in their mailbox and again covered what was due so you know it is it is pretty amazing when you put your trust and faith in God now like I said we have to be active you know we have to be trying to do the best we can do for ourselves and when it comes to a point where there's nothing we can do for ourselves and um we are in that spot. God, God will provide. God always provides his, for his children. And it's a real truth. And many of you see that. Many of you have been blessed in that way. We have been blessed in that way. And, and it's not that when we can be active that we're not active and we're just sitting here waiting for, for God to miraculously gift us. That's not it. Um, when we can't, you know, that's a different story. Um, but when we are able, we are called to do what we can do for ourselves. That's our level of self-sufficiency and our level of preparedness. We need to be proactive. We need to be active in our circumstances. But when we can't be, and even and even then, when we are active, God will meet us. God, God always, always, always provides. So it's pretty neat, too, when you can be an anonymous gifter and, and provide for somebody anonymously and sit back and watch you know, them grow. Because when those things happen, it's, it's inevitable for them not to be broken down and see the amazing gifts God has for them and how God cares. Um, you can only deny for so long and so much. Good morning, Miss Cammy. And then Angela says, reminds me of the story of Brother Andrew. He trusted God for everything. George Mueller also. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Diana. My internet finally connected. I came in the middle of the story. Craig and I have experienced something very similar. God is so, so very, very faithful. He is. It's really amazing. You know, the mountain man, man went away on work. I think I shared that with you. And uh, I feel I feel being called to share this with you. We got out this week to deliver my arm more. And we went to the um, post office, and his check was there. And we opened it, and it brought us both to tears because we know these jobs um, pay well, and they come sporadically, and we always feel very gifted and blessed by these jobs. And this has been one that we, this one just fell in our lap. It was very quick. Um, we found out about it like mid-February, and he had to leave the end of February. He was gone for a week, and when we opened that, we were reduced to tears because it was one of the biggest paying jobs he's ever been on. And, um, it was totally unexpected. Um, but God constantly provides the more active we are in his kingdom, the more he takes care of us. And it doesn't mean that we act in his kingdom to be blessed or to receive things. It's not like that at all. Um, you know, you know, we, it's in his word that he's going to take care of us. So it's a given, but it's not an expectation. Um, 
and his timing is always so priceless. And you know, we go through these journeys. We're walking this out for three years now, and many of you have been walking out other situations for several years now. And you know, it gets old, and you wonder why you're in this position for so long. And you know, you get to points where you call out to him, and you, you get tired, and you get weary, and you get physically exhausted. But his timing is always perfect, and that's one of the biggest renewing strengths and um, promises that we have is that his timing is always going to be better than ours. And we may never understand why we are walking what we are walking, um, but do know that whatever you're walking has extreme purpose, always, always. I'm going to share a YouTube it's a song by Shane and Shane that uh, Chad shared with me last week. I'm going to share that when I'm done here in the comments below, so make sure you check back for it. It's an awesome song, and it has John Piper in the middle of it, and his words are extremely powerful, and I encourage you all to listen to it, and I encourage you all to save that because you may need to listen to that in your future. It's good to save things and to have archives of things that we can turn to when we are in low places. The Bible is a given. Um, you know, I know I know for myself the Bible was something that I had and I carried for years and I referenced and I referred to, but I never read it because reading it was hard for me. I didn't understand it. It didn't make sense to me. I got lost in those these and nows and it just didn't make sense to me until I found the NLT version and then reading it just became an addiction. And it's pretty cool and really powerful when his words just lift off the page and totally uh, become a part of you, become a part of your existence. So that is certainly one tool to have on hand. Good devotionals, Jesus Calling. And you know, I have, I have this other one. It's called Simple Abundance, A Day Book of Comfort and Joy. Um, actually, I have it here by Sarah Van Brethnack. I had this for years, too. Um... This was back in my early walk with God, and um, I was reading something the other day that uh, moved me, and I, I wanted to share it with you, and to be honest, I don't remember all that it said, so I'm going to read this then, but um, Angela said, when we were younger, we had four little kids and one on the way. We were struggling, but didn't talk about it much. We woke up one morning... <sighs> That's so awesome. Woke up one morning to a full porch of groceries and hand-picked for us... Now, again, I can't read everything. This app is not letting me read everything today. But that's so awesome. And you know what? That was somebody paying attention in their community, in their surroundings, in their church. That is awesome. And, and you know, that's exactly what I'm getting at. We don't have to go out there to serve people and look for the glory. Um, we need to pay attention and be philanthropists of not just financial, but of good deed in our communities and pay attention to those that are in need. You know, if you're looking to for somebody that is in need and you don't see anybody, you can always ask the pastor of your church. They should be aware of who is struggling in the congregation. Um, but that's really awesome. That's really, really awesome. Uh, that is like, um, that made me think of the, the shack. You know, I, I spoke about The Shack a couple weeks ago, about the book, about the movie, and then also um, Revisiting the Shack is a devotional on um, Amazon, and he talks about the book and how it came about and everything, and in that he shares that they were in their lowest place, that they were going to lose their house, or they had just lost their house, they ended up on this, in this new house, and he had just written the shack and the shack was written just to give to his family his children and a couple select family friends and stuff but it had become so big and so powerful and such a requ request to be in book form that they decided to print it and they needed a thousand dollars and somebody left a thousand dollar check on their porch and then later in the um, devotional of uh, the shack revisited that particular person came into play and was blessed by the shack and came back as a videographer for, for the devotional. And it became known that he was the one that left the check 
that enabled the whole process to start. So it was pretty cool to see how his gift came to fruition and what it did and how many people it has served. So Angel, there's a perfect example of how those groceries served you and your family. And in my eyes, as an outsider looking in today, to see how that gift came to fruition through what you just did for that elderly couple. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Like I said, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I can't read this stuff without getting choked up. It's just awesome. It's awesome. And you know what? Uh, I want to share this to you too. If you're ever reading a devotional or you're listening to um, worship music or you hear a sermon and it reduces you to tears, sometimes um, it's just God leading you and God using the Spirit to speak to you and maybe to call you out, maybe for you to realize something good in yourself. Um, you know, pay attention to those moments. When God reduces us to tears, these are not unhappy tears. These are tears of movement and um, just the amazingness of how God works and how God uses us all. So thank you for sharing that, Angel. It's really awesome. It's really, really awesome. And I think I shared with you guys how God worked in us down in Georgia, um, providing just what we needed with my prescriptions and things and getting us home. It's just these are the testimonies you guys need to share. So thank you, Angela, for sharing this because this testimony is not only going to be here on Facebook Live for those that watch it here, but on YouTube. And we need to share our testimonies. We need to share how God moves and works and uses us in, in this world. So again, I don't know. There was something in this that uh, I felt needed to be shared. Committing to your spiritual awakening. I don't believe I know by Carl Jung. His quote. By this time, it's no secret that the simple abundance path is spiritual as well as a creative and practical. But simple abundance will work for you even if you're ambivalent about whether God exists. If you consciously work to bring more gratitude, simplicity, order, harmony, beauty, and joy into your daily life, your world will be transformed whether you believe of a higher power is guiding you or not. But if you commit to your spiritual awakening as the most important part of the process, something marvelous will happen. I know now why I wanted to read this to you. So again, but if you commit to your spiritual awakening as the most important part of the process, something marvelous will happen. Life will not feel as fraught, as frazzled, or as fragmented as before because you'll realize that the spiritual, the creative, the practical can't be separated. They each count. They each mean something. They're all connected. You think you are only making a meatloaf when, <laughs> when you're really, you're ministering to hungry bodies and weary souls in need of love and nourishment. A friend is hurting, so you spend a lunch hour searching for the perfect car to send her. Months later, she tells you how much comfort you conveyed across the miles. A woman calls your small and struggling mail order business looking for a certain item that you are out of temporarily. She can't wait for you to reorder because she needs it for her daughter's birthday party. Instead of sending her away disappointed, you give her the name and the telephone number of a competitor who also carries the item. You set in motion a cycle of good that blesses all concerned. A year ago, you might have not done this, but now you know that there is no competition in the spiritual realm. A year ago, you were not aware that every choice you make every day is part of a sacred whole. But as Christina Baldwin writes in her inspiring book, Life's Companion, Journal Writing as a Spiritual Quest, if we ready ourselves with spiritual openness, eventually we will come to the awareness that spirituality is the sacred center of which all life comes, including Mondays and Tuesdays and rainy Saturday afternoons in all their mundane and glorious details. A year ago, you might not have believed this could be true, but with each day of the journey, you have become more open to the mystery, the magic, the majesty of the master plan, because you are committed to your spiritual awakening. You don't have to just believe anymore because you know. See how I said God orchestrates things? I didn't know I was going to end up on this 
thing, you know, I ended up on this thing. First, we were talking about making the most of our time. I love how God orchestrates these Facebook lives. It's so amazing. And right there, it says it all. So I will share those in the comments like I've been also so that you guys can save them if you want. It's just amazing how God works. It's so amazing how God works. All right, Diana says, at our small group meeting last Monday night, I shared with them how very, very weary I am in this long process to find a home. I can be completely me with them as they gathered around. Now, that's where it stops, so I, I don't know if I can see if I can open this and see the rest of the comment. It's important when we are able to share our honest selves. You know, I'd be lying to the world if I told you that it's all a, a box of cherries back here and a bed of roses. It ain't. It, it just totally isn't. It totally isn't. We have hard days. We are human. We get weary. We get worn. We get beat up. We, we get, we, we, one thing we don't ever do is we don't lose our faith in God. We don't blame God. We pull into God when all that sets in. We know that the enemy, above, above all else, is trying to just beat us up. He's gonna. And it's important that we have places and people that we feel comfortable confiding in and sharing our rawest selves. You know, we all need that. And we need people that we can share ourselves with and that they don't judge and that they don't criticize and they don't give an amazing solution to our problem, that they are willing to pray for us, love us, lift us up, and, and be there for us in, in these struggles. And I, I encourage you guys, you know, if you don't have that person in your life, don't ever hesitate reaching out to me. Many of you have already done that and you know that. We need those people in our lives. Okay, I found it. Um, I can be completely me with them. As they gathered around us to pray for us, two of them literally became my Aaron and her and held up my arms as they prayed. <laughs> what a blessing and a renewing for my soul. They ministered to me in just the ways I needed. You know, and that's important. We need to find those people in our lives. And I, I pray that God is using these Facebook Lives for that for many of you. That you have that place to come because you can't find that place in your community. But I encourage you to seek that place in your community. And also be that person in your community. Be the person that you want somebody else to be to you. It's so important. We have to make a difference in this life. You know, there's so much... <sighs> zombie land out there and negative media and and you know I do believe there's stuff coming and I do believe we need to be prepared but I also believe that we need to not lose sight of the positive and we need not lose sight of what God is going to do in those circumstances and we need to be the builder of people you know there there is so little of that anymore and and I think that's why the mountain man and I struggle so much is because we see so many people needing to be built and they're being left to wither. They're being left alone. And we all know that when you get in these places, like you said, Diana, you know, Jill is in a bad, bad place today, you know, and when we get in those low places, we need to be built back up. We need help. We need, we need the renewing spirit coming from other people to sometimes help us grab our bootstraps. We've all been there where we can't do it on our own. And it's not that we're not warriors. It's not that we're not strong. But maybe God is using us in our weak spot to help some, encourage somebody else to be strong. I have to believe that. And I just, this, this was awesome today. And I just want to encourage you guys. You know, through your walk, don't be afraid to share your journey with people. Don't do it alone. It's hard to do it alone. It's really hard to do it alone. And, um, you know, build, build people, build communities around you and, and make the best of our time. You know, through us making the best of our time, 
we enable ourselves to have more time and that more time is up to us how we want to spend it. I encourage you to add things into your life that will give you joy and, and, and truly things that you enjoy doing. But this is also another area where we can add such great joy to our lives and sit back and, and reap the harvest of goodwill just by watching what we have accomplished in other people and what we've enabled other people to be empowered to continue doing. It's so important. So, so important. So guys, this has been long. They keep getting longer, but this has been amazing. And I, I feel it. I see how God is using this time. And I, I thank you guys for persevering and, and sharing what you share. Please don't be afraid to share your thoughts and to share your journeys and to share your testimonies here. And, and guys, by sharing these things, um, you give us direction to pray for you too. Diana, we will be praying for you guys. I know your journey is long and it's hard being unsettled and not being in your own place. Um, totally, totally get that. It's unsettling for us to be in this place and not knowing for sure um, what is ahead for us at some, times, some points too. Um, but at the same time, uh, and I know you're doing it too, even though you grew weary, is that you're trusting God for the outcome. And you're trusting God and knowing that it's going to be good. But that doesn't keep our human bodies from growing weary and being exhausted and being tired. And uh, Power of Prayer is huge, and I love the community we've started. And I hope many of you will join me over on Patreon because I'd like to see this continue that not just on Wednesdays that you need to come here and ask for prayer, but daily that you have the opportunity to ask for prayer for, from lots of other fellow brothers and sisters. That is my that is my goal. That is my hope for what I'm going to do on Patreon. Thank you, Tammy. Tammy said she'll be praying for Diana. And um, guys, it's not a it doesn't make us weak to ask for prayer. It makes us human, and it is it. It also calls out our brothers and sisters to be active. Um, there, there is never a reason why you should not ask for prayer, ever. And there's never a reason why we shouldn't pray for you. So, guys, thank you. This has been amazing. And talk about renewing for my spirit and my exhaustion. So amazing. And so amazing to see how God orchestrates this. You want to know the funny this is how he orchestrates this. The devotional that I saved to share was from February 28th. And February 27th was um, from the uh, Simple Abundance. I saved these. And then God sh had me share more on the um, Mind Over Health. But this was saved and this was meant to be shared. And it was meant to be shared today because I was in a state of exhaustion. Diana was in a state of exhaustion. Jill is struggling. Charles needed prayer. It's amazing. It's amazing to me to see. I wish you guys could see how this stuff all just comes across my desk and how I know. I just, I just know that this is the topic for the next one. Or I know now that i got to shuffle this one, that's going to be saved and I'll do that later, not knowing how it's going to fall into place. So, alright. So I don't ramble on and take up more of your time. This has been really powerful and really, whoop, really, really amazing. And I'm going to say a prayer for us all. Papa, I just thank you for all you do in each of our lives and how you show your presence and how you show your love whether it's by wrapping your arms directly around us or by the love of others. But thank you for calling us out to pick up our cross and to follow you. And if that means that we are supposed to drop everything in our bad spot to help somebody else that's in greater need, that's what we are called to do. And you just keep making it more obvious to us and you keep talking to us and using the spirit to guide us and and Papa I am just so grateful for how you speak through me on these Facebook lives and how we are growing a community of brothers and sisters that love on each other and that share their 
testimonies and give guidance and share what's worked for them. And through this community, we are not only building and growing, but we are helping others. And may today reach so many, many people through many shares and just through the people that it touches that we continue to just be a constant ripple effect of your love and goodness. I ask that you wrap your healing and loving arms around Jill and just help her body. Just heal her body and give her body relief. I know where she's at. I've experienced what she's experiencing and it's just such an awful place to be. Lord, just give her the relief she needs and love on her and let her know that she is loved by all of us and you. And just help her to find the right things in her healing process to accelerate her healing and uh, move her from this spot. But also, Papa, use her in this place. Uh, she has many gifts. I know of many. And just use her in this place and help her to reach others. Lord, just be with Diana and Kelly and Chad and Tammy and Angela and just help them with their daily walk and their struggles and just continue to empower and strengthen their spiritual walk. They are such spiritual encouragers and prayer warriors and just help them. You know each of their struggles. And Lord, I just ask that you empower them, strengthen them, and take them to the better side of things. Help Diana to find a home and just uh, empower each of them daily. And just thank you for blessing me with them. And I ask that you be with Charles and just uh, help him. I understand his fear in the medical system. Just give him a great peace when he goes for his procedure. Give him that great peace that you gave me when I was sitting on that gurney ready for my surgery that I just knew that you were saving my life and that you would be there. Just give him that. And, and Lord, just help him in his walk and uh, bless him for asking for prayer. And Papa, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each and every life that listens to this video. Just empower their week. Call them to serve. Call them to build people in their community. And call them to be a light that we may be a good example to others. That we're not just talking the talk, that we're walking the walk for you. And I just thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives because it's going to be amazing. And again, just thank you for using me. And just continue to use me how you see fit. I ask all of this in your the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, what a day. What an amazing Facebook Live. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I wish you a good rest of your week. May God be with you. And may God continue to bless you all. Take care. See you next week. God bless you.